Hello everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, I'm going to be bringing you another episode of Back Focus 101. Today I'm going to be focusing on the Celestron C9.25, C11, and C14 Edge HD Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes. Now this is my C9.25 Edge HD. It's a wonderful imaging telescope, does a really great job. But what's really great about this video is the C9.25, the C11, and the C14 Edge HD all have the same back focus requirements and they all have the same rear cell, which means I can lump them all together today in one episode. With that being said, I'm going to split today's uh, episode into two parts. So part one is going to be looking at a more basic setup. So how to obtain proper back focus with a DSLR camera so you can get imaging right away and just your basic deep sky CCD CMOS style camera, maybe throw in a filter drawer, that sort of thing. So just kind of the, the basic outlook. Part two, I'm going to be going a little bit more advanced into the back focus. So I'm going to be showing you how to attach a Celestron off-axis guider, a filter wheel, and still get the adapters and spacing that you need to achieve that proper back focus. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into part one today and get going. Now the first thing you're going to want to ask yourself is, am I going to be using the Celestron 0.7x reducer or not? Now I use a focal reducer almost all the time for imaging, but maybe you want to image at the native F10 focal ratio. Now the really cool thing about these three telescopes is Celestron designed the reducer and the telescope to have the same back focus requirements. So if you're using the reducer, back focus requirement is 146.05 millimeters. If you're not, it's still 146.05 millimeters. So once you've found your initial imaging train, you've got your spacers and adapters and everything's looking good, you can use that train with the reducer or without, it doesn't matter either way. If you think about it, 146 millimeters or 5.75 inches of back focus is actually pretty long, right? It's about 0.15 meters. And the reason Celestron gives you that much room is so that you can use a diverse array of equipment in your imaging train. However, as you start to add adapters and spacers and maybe a filter wheel and your camera, you're going to be having a lot of weight towards the rear end of your imaging train. And that's going to cause a decent gravitational torque on your equipment. So that's the reason Celestron includes the large 3.25 inch Schmidt Cassegrain threads. Now these threads are going to be capable of holding all that weight without a problem. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to remove the visual back and expose those large threads. As I mentioned before, the telescope and the Celestron 0.7x reducer have the same back focus requirements. And I like using focal reducer, so I'm just going to add this to the large threads real quick. And then I'm going to take off the dust cover. And as you would expect, the focal reducer does use those same large Schmidt Cassegrain threads. All right, now that I've covered everything I've needed to, let's go ahead and jump into the back focus here. So the first thing you're going to need is the Celestron T adapter for the Edge HD series. Now they make one of these for the eight inch and then they make one for the three telescopes focused on here. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get the C9.25, the C11, or the C14 T adapter. The main difference is uh, this one has the large Schmidt Cassegrain threads, whereas the 8 inch does not. It has the normal size threads. And then obviously this one is optimized for this telescope's back focus, so it's a little bit longer than the, uh, the 8 inch. So just make sure you buy the right uh, T adapter. Now, they sell a T threaded version, which is 42 millimeters, and a 48 millimeter version, which is a little bit wider. So if you have a full frame camera, you're going to probably want to use this um, 48 millimeter version. If you're using anything else, the 42 should be just fine. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and thread this on. And this is gonna give us 91.05 millimeters of back focus out of 146.05 millimeters. That makes sense, right? What's that gonna leave you with? 55 millimeters, which is the industry standard. Now on a standard DSLR, the sensor to flange distance is 44 millimeters. So just right there, that takes up 44 millimeters of back focus. That's why T-rings are basically 11 millimeters thick. So that gives you that industry standard of 55 millimeters. Now what you need to do is make sure that the T-ring you're planning on using has the right threads for not only your camera flange, but also the right threads for your T-adapter. 
So this is a William Optics 48mm T-ring for Canon cameras. So on one end, it has the proper bayonet for attaching to a Canon camera. And on the other, it has 48mm threads because I'm using the 48mm T-adapter. So then it will just thread right on. And just like that, I've got my back focus. So I've got 91.05 millimeters from the T-adapter, 11 millimeters from the T-ring, and 44 millimeters from flange to sensor. All total, that's 146.05 millimeters of back focus, which is exactly what the system requires. Now, another nice thing is this on threads, so you can change the orientation of your camera and just re-tighten it up. If you want to use filters with your DSLR, I highly recommend clip-in filters. These easily drop right into the body of the DSLR, and then you can easily pop them out as well. So this is a full-spectrum modified DSLR, so I can use infrared filters, light pollution filters, hydrogen alpha, really whatever I need to. And these clip-in filters really make it easy because once they're in, the T-ring just drops in over the top and you're ready to go again. Okay everyone, well that is how you obtain the proper 146.05 millimeter back focus using a DSLR. You can see it's pretty basic, it's easy to incorporate a filter. You just want to remember two main things. One, you buy the proper T-adapter, and number two, whichever uh, thread size you pick, 42 millimeter or 48 millimeter, make sure you buy a T-ring with that same thread size that's appropriate for your camera. So that's pretty much it in terms of back focus with the DSLR. So now let's go ahead and move over to the CCD or CMO style deep sky camera basic back focus and take a look at that. Getting a deep sky camera to the proper back focus is basically just as easy as it is with a DSLR. And the reason for that is the companies that make these style of cameras know that 55 millimeters of back focus is basically the gold standard for the industry. So they'll include adapters and spacers to help get you there. So with this 91.05 millimeter T adapter, what does that leave me? 55 millimeters or that standard. So I'm going to go ahead and now show you how to attach this ZWO 183 MC Pro to the telescope and get that proper back focus. So these two spacers came with my camera. This is a 21 millimeter spacer and this is a 16 and a half millimeter spacer. This 11 millimeter spacer came uh, installed on the camera when I got it. And so really what I want to do first is tell you the reason why I went with a 48 millimeter T adapter. I don't own a full frame camera, so there's really no reason to get a 48 millimeter uh, T adapter. However, I knew that this 16 and a half millimeter spacer that came with my camera is 48 millimeter female threads with 42 millimeter male threads. So in order to not use an adapter, I figured, hey, the 48 millimeter T adapter would work best. So these just thread right on the top. That changes the threads at the top to 42 millimeters, which is what the other adapter is, and then everything goes together well. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding up all the back focus for this deep sky camera here. So the sensor to flange distance is six and a half millimeters. With this 11 millimeter ring, that makes 17 and a half millimeters. Next, I add the 21 millimeter spacer. and then the 16 and a half millimeter spacer. And that's gonna give me 55 millimeters of back focus. All right, so we have 91.05 millimeters of back focus and 55 here on our camera, so we just thread these together now. And just like that, we have the required 146.05 millimeters of back focus. Okay, so what if I want to incorporate a two inch filter? What's really cool is ZWO makes a filter drawer that is the exact same thickness as the 21 millimeter spacer. So it basically just replaces that 21 millimeter spacer. However, the threads are a little bit different. So what you want to do is take this M48 to M42 converter, and this also came with my camera, and you're just going to thread that onto the top. Okay, just like that. 
And then you're going to take the 16 and a half millimeter spacer and put that on first. And then the filter drawer with that converter will go on over the top. And you still have 55 millimeters of back focus, and this now gives you the ability to use filters. Now that we've replaced the 21 millimeter spacer with this filter drawer, we just thread everything back on. And then that really just makes using two inch filters a breeze. You can buy extra sliders if you want. They just pop out, pop back in, and you are ready to go for filtered imaging. Now I should mention I have another episode of Back Focus 101 that discusses how filters affect back focus. Because you're adding another piece of glass to your imaging train, it does change things slightly. Now when you're at F10 or F7, it's not going to be a huge difference, so you don't have to worry about it if you don't want to, but you usually just take the thickness of the filter glass and you divide it by three. And that's how many millimeters of back focus you should add to your system. So if you want to add a half millimeter spacer ring, or a one millimeter spacer ring, you certainly can, but it's not gonna be the most detrimental thing in the world if you don't. Now, if this were an F2 telescope or an F3 telescope, you definitely need that extra space. But again, at F10 or at F7, you should be okay. All right, everyone. Well, that concludes this episode of Back Focus 101. So today you learned how to attach a DSLR or basic deep sky imaging setup with or without filters and still get to that proper back focus requirement using the Celestron C9.25 or C11 or C14 Edge HD Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. Now, for part two, I'm going to be going a little bit more complex. We're going to be removing the T adapter completely, and I'll show you how to install a Celestron off-axis guider, a filter wheel, and a monochrome camera. So a lot different setup, but we'll still get to that 146.05 millimeters. And then lastly, uh, if you have questions on back focus, be sure to see my back focus 101 playlist. I've done several episodes now, so hopefully if you have any questions, one of those videos addresses it. But besides that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. And as always, clear skies.